Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe and most of all I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video we're going to be looking at the Heroes of Renown series and today we're going to be looking at the Wood Elves. We're going to take a dive and look at all the characters of Renown from the Wood Elves in the Warhammer Old World setting or Warhammer Fantasy as it was known. So let's get cracking on into it. First up, Orion the King in the Woods. Orion is the King of Athaloran and presides over the realm together with Ariel, his Queen. Through the strange magic of the Oak of Ages, Orion acquired through the aspects of Kurinos, the old elven god of nature, the wild hunter of the forest embodies the untamed savagery of the primeval elven spirit. Orion's immortality is part of the natural cycle of the seasons. Although he dies each midwinter, he is reborn anew in the spring. If their king is slain in battle, the elves will bear him away from the battlefield and seal him within the Oak of Ages to be reborn again in spring. When his realm is threatened, Orion assumes the awesome aspect of Kurinos, summons the wild hunt, and goes forth to hunt the foe. All Athaloran trembles as the hunt stampedes through the forest and races across the moors. The dogs of war crawl from their hiding places and gallop at Orion's heels, howling with savage anticipation. Spears of lightning crack down from the sky and thunder rolls across the treetops. The sound of Orion's mighty bellowing echoes through the woods, causing saplings to topple and stones to crack open. The ravens and crows fly up from their roosts of the Tree of Woe to glut themselves of the bodies of the enemy. As Orion Kurnos himself embodied leads his army through the forest like an enraged spirit of the wood, felling foes with his magical spear as he chases them headlong through the trees. He grows to twice his normal size and sprouts great antlers like a mighty stag, and his hair is a mass of entangled ivy and flesh becomes green as the season passes on. Ariel, the Mage Queen of Lauren. Ariel is the queen of Athaloran and presides over the realm together with Orion. Ariel acquired the aspects of Isha, the ancient elven goddess of nature, through the strange magic of the Oak of Ages at the same time as Orion gained the aspects of Kuranos. Thus the magical forces of nature flow through Ariel as if she were Isha herself. Ariel wields immense natural forces and weaves them according to her will, commanding the trees of the forest to grow and vegetation to spring forth from the ground. She it is who weaves enchantments around them onwards to their doom. Like Orion, Ariel's immortality is linked to the seasons, and though she dies each midwinter, she is reborn the following year. If Ariel perishes in battle, the elves will carry her away and seal her within the Oak of Ages to be reborn once again in spring. When enemies enter the Forest of Lauren, Ariel shifts shape into her sylph-like war aspect. She grows almost twice the height of an ordinary elf and unfolds huge wings like those of a gigantic moth, covered in tiny scales of shimmering iridescent colours. Upon her wings, strange markings known as the Eyes of Isha and the Spirals of Isha can be seen. Sometimes Ariel's wings display the markings of the Death's Head moth, indicating she is enraged and in a vengeful mood. Moth-like antenna emerge from Ariel's head, but her face remains that of the beautiful she-elf with piercing eyes. The upper part of her body is clad in shimmering scales of incandescent green, while the lower parts trail away into an infinity like an ethereal or elemental being. She appears to glow with an inner light like the moon and trails raw magic in a shower of glittering stardust. In this form, Ariel can fly around the battlefield wielding her magic. The wafting of her huge wings over the heads of the enemy fills them with both dread and awe. Naith the Prophetess Naith the Prophetess is skilled in the arcane art of divination. Only a select band of mages know this secret law. By means of divining rods cut from magical trees, they are able to feel the flow of magic deep within the ground. When they find a point at which the magic rises towards the surface, they instruct their kindred to set a great stone in that place carved from arcane spirals to direct the flow of magic. In this way, the Wood Elf Mages have created a web of protection around the Forest of Lauren. Changes in the flow of magic can be detected using the divining rods and used to predict impending danger or the presence of intruders within the forest. 
Naive has become so adept at interpreting these signs that she is known throughout Lauren as the Prophetess. Whereas other mages study the ways of the elements, trees, and beasts, Naith has devoted herself to the arts of divination. Although there are mightier mages with the greater power on the battlefield, Naith will sometimes accompany the Wood Elf host to battle to use her unique and subtle skills to help her kindred. Naif is always accompanied by her faithful companion, Othu the Owl. When not flying around the battlefield, Othu rests on Naith's wrist. Naith is able to understand the owl's twitterings and knows how to interpret his strange wisdom. It is said that many of her inspired prophecies indeed come from the owl, for Othu is all-seeing and all-wise. In battle, Naith sends Othu to swoop low over the battlefield, where he will see where the fighting is fiercest and the danger is greatest. Sometimes Othu will perch upon a standard of a regiment or the shoulder of its leader. This is seen as an omen of good luck by the Wood Elves. A unit of Wood Elves favoured by the Owl seems to gain from the bird's uncanny sureness of sight and are more likely to shoot straight. Thalandor Thalandor was known as Doomstar because he would swoop over the dark forest by night hunting for goblins trying to creep into Atholoran under the cover of darkness. If he spied any from on high, he would swoop down between the pines and attack without mercy, riding upon the back of Gwandor, his faithful Great Eagle companion. Gwandor the Black is perhaps the most famous of all the Great Eagles in Atholoran. The mighty bird carried Thalandor into battle against the undead hordes of the vampire counts of Sylvania, and it was the bravery and power of Gwandor that saved Thalandor's life on that grim day. A Wood Elf contingent which had marched to help the Empire by scouring the grim pine forest of Sylvania for signs of the count's army was overwhelmed by skeleton hordes. The location of the enemy was revealed, but almost at the cost of the entire Wood Elf contingent. With their general slain, the elves fought a rearguard action and many did escape. Thalandor heroically held back the hordes with his magic until he was beset by carrion and badly wounded. The elves escaped, thinking Thalandor had fallen. Meanwhile, Gwandor fought ferociously to rescue his master and carried the wounded Thalandor speedily back to the safety of Lauren, where he was healed by the magic of Ariel. Lothlan the Brave, Battle Standard Bearer Lothlan earned his nickname the Brave at the Battle of Creaking Yew. Here he took up the battle banner from the hand of the slain Arith the Strong, where the elves were in a desperate battle against the Skaven. When the elves saw the banner rise again with Lothlan bravely galloping amongst the foe, hewing left and right, they surged forward like an irresistible tide. Thus, they utterly defeated the Ratmen that day, scattering them headlong into a rout through the forest to become prey of the wild beasts during the hungry winter of that year. Since then, Lothlan has had the honour of bearing the sacred banner of Apple Lauren, standing as Ariel and Orion's personal battle standard bearer. Scarlock Scarlock is known both within and beyond the forest of Lauren. Leading a band of scouts, he often ventures into the land surrounding the Wood Elf Whirl to gain advanced warning of impending threats. Scarlock is skilled in the interpretations of tracks and portents, and will sometimes even warn the Bretonians if he finds sign of their common enemies. Thus, he has become a trusted friend of many Bretonian barons, and is welcomed at their castles, especially when he brings the excellent venison of Lauren. It is usually Scarlock who acts as an emissary of the king and queen in the woods, and it is he who is sent to escort friends through to the forest's king's glade. Scarlock not only knows the forest of Lorne, but also has intimate knowledge of other great forests in the Old World, acquired during his scouting expeditions. It is even said that there are small bands of his kin secretly dwelling in many forests, utterly unbeknown to the rulers and peoples of those lands. They are undoubtedly there not only as way watchers, but to befriend and protect any treemen or dryads who may still dwell there. Scarlock's men have been known to turn up unexpectedly on many a far-flung battlefield, screaming out of the trees to aid those ambushed or surrounded in the woods by orcs or other vile foes. Witchwethel the Wild, Wardancer Champion Witchwethel is a wardancer of exceptional skill and agility. 
It is he who performs the ritual dance at the beginning of spring, which awakens the king and queen in the wood after their long sleep in the Oak of Ages. In battle, he is unsurpassed in his reckless savagery. Which Wethel carries the drum of orc skin, which is made from the stretched skin of an orc warlord slain at the Battle of the Glade of Woe, and beaten with a drumstick made from the rib bone of the orc warlord that was slain during the battle. Score the Falconer. It is said that the Falconer dwells in an eyrie in the topmost branches of an old pine tree in the company of his falcons. Here he speaks with eagles and other birds of prey. He shuns the company of other elves, but will fight beside them if the forest is in great danger from enemies. Then the scouts and the kindreds will go to the greatest trouble to seek him out to join them in battle. He commands his falcons as they fly, directing them with bird calls as deadly weapons, swooping out of the sky into the attack. These keen-eyed living missiles are more deadly than arrows and always return to their master, dripping blood from their wicked hook beaks and sharp talons. Siolan Siolan is the oldest and most cunning of the Wood Elf warriors. He fights on foot and will usually lead warriors from his own kindred of the Oak Glades. Not only does he use the longbow, but he is an expert hand-to-hand -hand fighter and adept at organising ambushes in the depths of the forest. Siolan carries a buckler instead of an ordinary shield, and is this small shield with a spike bronze boss and many bronze studs arranged in arcane patterns. Not only does this buckler parry blows of the enemy, but it can be used to strike back at an opponent with whose blow is parried. The bow of Lauren is strung with the hair of elf maids and enchanted with potent charms. This bow Solon charges into battle with. Gruaf, the Beastmaster. It is said that his name was originally known as Gruaf, but to most elves he is known only as the Beastmaster. He has forgotten his name and even the words of the elven tongue if he ever knew it at all. Now he speaks only to the beasts of the forest with their own calls and gestures. He dwells on the margins of society but in the depths of the forest. He shares the lairs of the wild beast by night but by day he hunts with his feral brethren and feasts on the same prey. The beastmaster has two companions, Fang and Claw, two ferocious saber-toothed tigers. Fang and Claw are a pair, male and female, the last of their kind in the forest. When the forest is threatened by enemies, the Beastmaster is summoned and comes forth with his tigers to do battle besides his elven kindred. He fights alone, controlling his pack as they stalk the battlefield for prey with their long, dagger-like fangs. After the battle, glutted with flesh, elf and beasts both disappear back into the trees. Nestra and Arahan, the Sisters of Twilight High in the alpine slopes of the pine crags, the eerie of the twilight dominates the skyline. These are the elegant halls of the Sisters of Twilight, the twins Nestra and Arahan. War dancer kindreds throughout Athaloran dance the tale of these mysterious elves, telling the story of a young elf child named Nastrahan that wandered deep into the depths of the wild woods. Alone, this young girl stumbled through the dense undergrowth led by glowing fairy lights and darting sprites. Deep into the darkness she was led, into a place that even the Waywatchers feared to go. The family of the girl child were distraught, but accepted that she had been claimed by Athel Lauren. Many years passed before a battle was fought at the feet of the Grey Mountains. Foul beastmen had lit great pyres, and the trees of Athel Lauren cried out silently in pain as they were torn from the earth and heaved onto the blaze. Drawn by the ripples of pain that spread throughout the forest, the wood elves assailed the spoilers the next morn, but there were too few in number to prevail. Hundreds were slain by elven arrows, and Wethel Witch the Wild led his war dancers in acrobatic dances that slew countless more, but it was not enough to halt the creatures. Brutal gores fought their way through a hail of bonefire and began hacking apart the elven archers, spilling much precious blood. Amidst the carnage, a pair of elven maidens appeared, descending into the clearing, crouched upon the back of an ancient dragon of the deep forests. The warrior maidens were identical in all ways but one, where one had black hair as dark as night, the other had hair of the purest white. The ancient dragon tore through the beastmen, scattering those it did not rip limb from limb. 
The warrior maidens fired their bows as entangling briars sprung up from the ground to halt those who sought to flee and great magical fires consumed those who fought on. The dark-held elven maiden leapt gracefully to the ground to tend to the wounded while the paled hair twin, still upon the back of the great dragon, launched into the air in pursuit of the fleeing beasts, intent on slaying every last one. It slowly became apparent that in the depths of the magical dark woods, the girl child Nestrahan had become something altogether different and strange, and that these two war maidens were linked somehow to her. Some speculated that one was the real girl, while the other was merely a powerful changeling, Yet the wisest spell weavers said that it was as though one child had been split into two separate beings. Each sister represented the divided yet balanced nature of the wood elves themselves. Where one sister is light, one is dark. Where one is filled with anger and lethal destructiveness, the other is calm and serene. They reflect opposing yet harmonious aspects of Athel Lauren itself. The sister twins are masters of the wild beasts that dirt well within Athel Lauren. The creatures adore Nestra and will do as she wishes out of love while they fear Arahan and do so as she wills out of respect. In times of strife and need, the sisters ride forth from their mountain eyrie, borne upon the back of one of their faithful beasts. Arahan takes savage pleasure in cutting down her foes, while Nestra take, does not and does so with a tear in her eyes. Araloth, Lord of Tau Sin Aroloth was not always a hero. In his youth, he was a craven lordling who had not the mettle to hunt any prey that could hunt him in return. Whilst others went to battle in his stead, Aroloth caroused and hunted in the company of worthless friends and tried to forget his shame. It was upon one such hunt that Aroloth was thrown from his horse and separated from all companions save for Skarin, his trusted hawk. After wandering lost for many hours, Araloth came to a strange glade. Though dawn had broken scant hours before, the lordling now beheld a crescent moon hanging low in a darkened sky. It was a scene to stir the heart, yet Araloth scarcely saw it. He had eyes only for the elf maiden who stood alone at the glade's heart, and the monstrous four-armed demon that menaced her. There, at last, Araloth found his courage, for even his craven heart could not abandon the maid to the demon's cruel pleasures. Before he realised it, Araloth was running to her aid, and his hunting spear soon gouged the demon's flank. The beast was swift, and Araloth would have perished, save for his counter-blow. Had Skarin not descended from the skies to tear out the demon's eyes, blinded, the beast flailed madly, but Araloth ducked easily under its claws and thrust his spear deep into its black heart. As the daemon fell dead, Araloth closed his eyes, amazed at both his victory and the courage with which he had won it. When he opened them once more, the demon's body had vanished. Looking upon the maiden once more, Araloth saw at last beyond her mortal guise and knew he was in the presence of a goddess. Long they walked under the stars, the goddess and the lordling. They spoke of many things and she revealed to him many wonders. The goddess told him of how she had watched and counselled the elves since the dawning of the world, speaking plainly when the creator allowed it, and through dreams when he would not. But even the power of the gods must fade, she said sadly. Hers was nearly spent, but she still had three great gifts to bestow. Araloth, freed now of his fears, was the first of these, a hero to defend the elves in the coming dark. The second would be Araloth's firstborn daughter, a saviour to bring hope when it was most needed. Of the third gift, however, the goddess would not speak, for there were some secrets even she could not share. Soon after, Araloth fell deep into a sleep. When he awoke, he did so in his own hall with friends at his bedside. He had been thrown from his horse, they said, his senses scattered by the fall. When Araloth told them of his tale, his companions laughed thinking he had dreamt it all. Not wishing to be thought mad, Araloth laughed also, but his heart knew the truth. In the years after, Araloth became the fearless hero that the goddess had foretold, his triumphs the inspiration for many a song. Following the Battle of Arden, in which Araloth slew Morgar the Corrupter, the Mage Queen declared that he would thereafter be her royal champion, an honour not bestowed in living memory. 
Yet despite the renown and the accolades, Araloth had never forgotten she who had made him thus. So it was on those nights when the crescent moon shines down upon Athaloran, Araloth the Bold embarks upon the hunt with Skarin as his only companion, hoping to meet his beloved goddess once more. Well, thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our little community here at Sinful Gaming, you can do so by coming and joining our Discord server, which you'll find a link to in the description of the video. While you're on YouTube as well, go check out my featured channel section, which contains a bunch of other fantastic Age of Sigma content creators doing everything from battle reports, tactical videos, lore videos, painting tutorials, and more besides that. Lastly, though, we'd like to give a shout out to everyone who helps support the channel via Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you to James, AJC, JC, Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lowell, Outer and Chop First, Chaosborn, James Crowder, and Andrew Bowen. Thank you all so much for your support. And if you'd like to help support the channel like these fine people do, you can do so by clicking once again on the links down in the description of the video to either YouTube members or Patreon. Thank you all for supporting the channel, though, watching the content. Have a nice day, stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the Grey. Ciao for now.